Okay everyone, so I thought long and hard about what movie should be my first movie review, but I made this decision for a reason. Don't worry, I'll explain it to you. You never forget your first time. Spider-Man. So Spider-Man came out in May 2002, and I remember seeing this on the big screen for the first time. I was pretty young. And not only was this the first comic book superhero movie that I ever saw, it was also the first big live-action PG-13 movie that I ever saw. So this is the movie that opened my eyes to the world of big, awesome action movies. And you remember how this movie starts out with that awesome opening credit sequence with Danny Elfman's music going in the background? Dude, that shit is awesome! You're like flying around the city, looking at these title credits, and seeing the webs all over the place, you're like, whoa! So this movie focuses on Peter Parker. He's played by Tobey Maguire. He's a senior in high school, he's a bit of a nerd, he's a shy person, and I really don't want to compare this to the Amazing Spider-Man reboot. Everyone's saying they love Andrew Garfield more, and I kind of do, but that doesn't mean that Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was not great as well. So Peter Parker is in school, he's on a school field trip, they're visiting some sort of laboratory, and you know how it goes, he gets bitten by the radioactive spider, and he starts gaining these superpowers. He wakes up the next morning, he's got like abs, he's looking in the mirror, and he suddenly has abs, he's like flexing in the mirror, he's like, oh wow, look at that. That scene at the school the next day where he's fighting with the bully. He's discovering that he's got these super senses. He's dodging the punches everywhere. He takes the bully by the arm and he goes, Dish! cool scene. Now he's pretty much digging these powers. He's like, wow, I have all this cool power. But his Uncle Ben tells him no. With great power comes great responsibility. I really felt that scene. I love Cliff Robertson as Uncle Ben. In fact, I do like him more than Martin Sheen. So Peter Parker's living it up, he's got all these cool powers, and then something really tragic happens in his life. His Uncle Ben dies. I don't really consider that a spoiler. I mean, if you know the Spider-Man story, then you know Uncle Ben dies. So I'm sorry if I spoiled that for you. This isn't the thing here. So when Peter's Uncle Ben dies, he really takes those words to heart. With great power comes great responsibility. And he becomes a superhero Spider-Man. And it is really cool to see Spider-Man swinging around the city. I mean, again, this is the first First big action movie I ever saw. So seeing him swing around this big open New York City, you know, crazy cinematography, he's going through the air, he's doing his thing. In any Spider Man movie these days, I'm sitting there going, wow, that is too cool. Now, the villain in this movie is the Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, who's played by Willem Dafoe. And the dude, I love this dude, is Norman Osborn, seriously, because he has that really evil voice. You can tell that he's really got a backstory to him, he's got a history of just, he probably did not have the best life growing up. Follow the cold shiver running down your spine. The thing about this villain is his costume though. I mean seriously, this is 2002. This is, you know, mid Lord of the Rings. People were making really cool special effects back then, like a Balrog. The Green Goblin in this movie kind of looks like an evil Power Ranger. It's not a huge complaint that I have, it's just something I need to address, I guess. Willem Dafoe still kills it as Norman Osborn. His son, Harry Osborn, is played by James Franco. Oh, look how far he's come. Now Harry and Peter, they're best friends and you can kind of see it in the beginning of this movie. You know, when they're on the school field trip, Harry's kind of protecting Peter from the bullies. You know, they're having some decent conversations. So I, I buy their friendship in this movie. If I had to pick a weak link in this movie, it's the love interest, Mary Jane Watson, Kirsten Dunst. Any scene with Mary Jane in it is just this really cheesy scene. You know, you're taller than you look. I hunch. Don't. Seriously? Like, what is that even about? <laughs> Those are the moments that take me out of it, because I don't think it would really go down like that. No couple these days ever talks like that. When you look in her eyes, and she's looking back in yours, everything feels not quite normal. You feel excited and terrified at the same time. Nah, nah, I, I, I just don't buy it. And yeah, sure, it's a little dated, but I mean, there are movies from the 80s that I just love and they don't have any cheesy moments at all. So there that is. I mean, Mary Jane wasn't terrible. She was functional in the movie. She's pretty hot too. And it's not like this brings the movie down or anything. There are some awesome action scenes in this movie. Like the whole scene at the festival, Green Goblin's flying around in the air, he's throwing bombs at people. I remember that kind of scared me when I was young when Green Goblin throws the bomb at those guys. They're just like, Bruh! and they turn into skeletons and they crumble. I mean, sure, you, l you look at it now and it's all CGI, obviously, but it still makes you go, oh, yeah, they're dead. And again, seeing Spider-Man doing his thing, just taking out bad guys in that montage, that's actually a pretty good montage, I think. There are good montages and bad montages. This movie has a good one, I think. You know, he's stopping robberies and he's, you know, taking out thieves and thugs and criminals. It's just really cool seeing him do that. And there's some really funny comic relief in this movie. J.K. Simmons. J. Jonah Jameson is seriously hilarious in this movie. He doesn't want to be famous? I'll make an infamous! I'll burn his house down with a lemon! Sorry, wrong thing. The guy is really hilarious in this movie. In the end, this movie's pretty good. A couple cheesy moments can bring the movie down, yeah sure, but it doesn't make me hate the movie. You feel connected to the characters, at least the main character anyways. It's got a great villain, some awesome action scenes, and a really good story. Spider-Man gets a B plus from me. Okay, so what is your favorite iteration of Spider-Man? Movie, comics, TV show, anything. Let me know in the comments below. And... Don't forget to subscribe.